Welcome to a new Project Camp video. So in this video, we're going to show you how to set up a base camp for your piece of land. Uh, especially in the beginning days, there's nothing there, so it's good to have some basic utilities. And we're going to set them up in two shipping containers. One we call our town center, which has a kitchen, shower, boiler, washing machine. And the other shipping container will have the workspace with all our tools and materials. So yeah, the first thing you need is uh, two shipping containers. So we have our containers. the kitchen and the workspace. And there are many different shapes and sizes to choose from. And I would say, just look at your own land and what you want to do to decide on what makes sense for you. But either way, I would highly recommend to have a look at a container that has a door on the long side, because it's much easier to get in and out and to access stuff. However, the downside is they can be more expensive and also just difficult to find. They're very scarce. So if you find one, you're lucky. And I would say, get it. If not, you can always find the normal containers, which just have a door opening on the short side and the upside is it's a container so it's just a metal box you can modify and it can be quite uh, heavy to work on this it's all big bulky metal so I would highly recommend to not do it on your own so for this project we have Jason helping out yeah all right so now we have a container so it's time to do the rough work and especially in this case we need to put some more work into the town center because the container is in pretty rough state so we first need to clean it up we fix all the holes that are in there and we're going to cut out two big openings to make sure we have some light coming in and it becomes a nice space. So these containers are second hand and they've been used for many years. So throughout time there are a lot of holes in the ceiling and in the wall of people mounting stuff on there, drilling a hole or put a screw in. But you don't want this because then the water leaks in when it rains. And one good trick to actually find these holes to make sure you can close them is to just close the door of your container and when it gets dark inside you can easily see and find all the holes to make sure you can weld them close so they're waterproof. So there are quite some holes to fix. So we're going to cut out a hole in this side of the container so we have some more light coming in. So it's going to be right here. And we're going to use some grinding. So one tip when you have to cut out big surface from a container is to leave a few gaps like here uncut it so uh, it doesn't fall yet so you just cut it for 95% and in the end you just cut a few areas and then it pops out. It really changes a lot having holes in your container it suddenly feels like a nice space to be in with some light. So I would highly recommend.
the container is pretty old and it also has a few dents, which is usually not a problem, but there's also a big one here. So the water is actually staying in, which might cause some rust in the future. And we don't want that. So we have a beam here and a car jack, and we're gonna apply pressure so the dent goes out. Hopefully. The hose is So we made quite a few changes to the town center and it looks pretty rough now. So we're gonna give it a paint job to make sure it really looks properly finished inside. So the container is now fully cleaned up and it's kind of cool that this is a completely closed space. So I was thinking of this Mr. Bean shot where he has this uh, room he wants to paint and he just puts a bucket in the middle with an explosion and then everything is painted. I'm not going to try that one, although it sounds fun. Uh, but it, I'm kind of sort of using the same principle with a compressor. So you can just paint everything, it doesn't matter because it's all inside this closed container. If I'm gonna die five years earlier, it's probably because of this. So the container is purely white, it looks new actually. All right, so now the town center is cleaned up and both containers are in good state to start working on the interior. We're gonna do the workspace later, but we're gonna start with the town center. And in order to build the interior, we first need to put in a floor. Uh. All right, so this floor is made from recycled plastic and uh, we, we work a lot with recycled plastic and looking for applications. So we figured let's try out for a floor and the pattern is actually quite nice. It has this flaky black pattern. And the upside of recycled plastic is, is that can withstand water. So for a kitchen, we can easily clean the floor really wet. But to be honest, I don't really know if a floor of recycled plastic makes sense. But that's also why we're trying it out, so we know. So we provide a floor plan which you can use to uh, build your own container but I would say really use this just as a reference because we happen to have this big workspace so we have a lot of stuff like storage, washing machine, a big fridge, a big metal lathe um, but I can imagine it's not the same for you. So I would say just use the blueprints as a reference and see what you already have in your house, kitchen, workspace, whatever you need on your land to make sure you arrange it to your own needs. So yeah, we didn't have to start from scratch. We already had a kitchen, appliances and tools, including this big kitchen counter. It has a super solid wood surface and we like it. However, like this, it won't fit in a container. So we chopped it in half. Which got quite smoky. So I uh, hope you learned your lesson. Always make sure you have sharp tools, otherwise you get this. So this one part will go in a container and the other parts we'll use later for other things. And while we're at it, we also cleaned up the surface. Now we also got a sink, but we had to install a water tub and the frame was a bit worn out, so we made a new one. And we got this oven last year. It was thrown out as crap, 
But to be honest, we don't really need an oven that big in the beginning. But we like it since it's super good quality, so we'll take it. But it didn't have a proper frame, so we custom made one, we're using some kitchen wood. So here's an overview of our inventory. We have an oven, sink, big fridge, boiler, washing machine and a counter for chopping the vegetables. But we also had to make a few custom things. Like this pretty basic small shelving system we use to store our bulk food. And from this pile of leftover wood we made a cabinet for in the back. This will be used to store our office supplies and will serve as a work table and charging station for our electronics. So most of the things are ready and we can put them in the container. Everything is now in except the most complex thing, we still need to make this, the shower. The shower was sort of our filler, it would take the leftover space we still had available. So once we knew our size, we found an old metal drinking box for a kettle on the scrapyard. We cleaned it up and made it fit the container and gave it a paint job. And for the walls, we wanted to try something new. So the walls are made from recycled plastic bricks. No idea if this makes sense, so this is another tryout. We estimate a 50% success rate here, not very high. And the wood on the bottom is the leftover wood from the other side of the kitchen counter. So once this was installed, we could make the last thing in there to finish it up. The floor in the office area. And so this wall is going to be demolished, but it's actually super nice wood, uh, so we're going to use it for the floor. Alright, so now the interior of the town center is ready, so we can go to the next one, the workspace. And this one was slightly easier because the container was in good condition, but also everything inside there, like the tools, the material, the machines, we kind of already had them, so we could start straight away by putting it all inside. Most of these things we could move on our own, but sometimes it required a few extra hands, like our heavy drill press. And some stuff was just too heavy. So we asked some guys on the street to help out. But the biggest challenge for the workspace was the sorting. So we're sorting all of this mess into nice organized crates. You can only fit so much in a container, so you need to be selective. And we like these crates. And a few years ago I made the shelving system to store them. But this doesn't fit in a container, so we had to chop it up into two small ones. And we will turn one in a sturdy workbench. What are you making? A uh, tabletop for the workbench and the workspace. From an old bowling table? Yes, lovely piece of old bowling table. And finally, when we installed everything, we filled them up with our best tools. A lot of times while building inside the containers, we found ourselves bolting things to the wall, like the shelf or the tool board. One of the tools that made this really quick and easy for us to do was this. It's called a step drill and it allows you to drill holes really quickly through sheet metal. Alright, so both containers are now filled up, interior is ready. The last thing we need to do is to finish them up, which means electronics, plumbing and giving it a final paint job. Electronics for these containers are quite complex. We want to make the electronics plug and play, so you arrive at the place, plug it in a socket and everything works. And this sounds easy, but especially the workspace had quite a lot of machines, cables and fuses running. So Jason spent a few midnights wiring it all up to make it work. 
Now we're also sharing our schematics, but yours will probably look different. But you can download ours as a reference. Same for the watering system, we're not gonna go in depth in this video. You can find all the information in the academy. Alright, so at this point everything works and runs. Works. Input. And the output. And the outside of the container is still pretty rough and very in its original condition. Uh, so for instance the holes we cut out, we painted a bit to make sure it doesn't rust. Um, because yeah, it's just raw metal. We still have all the holes from welding in here. They slowly start to rust. And also the container itself is pretty old, so slowly all the paint starts to chip off. Um, so we're gonna give the outside of the container a paint job to make sure it's gonna last a solid few years. All right, so that's it. Both containers are now ready, everything is installed. But before we ship them out, there's one thing we need to do, a tour. All right, so we finished building the containers. Now we're gonna do a tour to show you guys all the features. I would take on this one and Jason would show you the workspace. So it's a bit small and tight in the container, so it's probably better to use a fish eye to make sure we see everything properly. So we start here in the kitchen area. We have a big oven to make big meals. Uh, on this side, we do more cooking on the pots and pans. Uh, here we have a window. We can open and close it up. Um, it's made from old CD cases, so from plastic. And it's also good to serve your meals outside. Lunch time. Uh, on here we have a big counter with drawers uh, where we store all our things, like cups, mugs, cutlery. Here we chop our vegetables. On this side is more the cleaning area. So uh, yeah, I guess you know how this works. We have our towels and cloths. Here we have our bulk storage of sponges to make sure we stay clean for a long time. And over here we have more our spices and herbs, some knives, kitchen appliances. Uh, here we have cold food or fresh food in a big fridge. And here, bulk food, so it's all containers full of uh, dried bulk food. I really like this because it helps you to uh, reduce the amount of packaging you use by buying in bulk. And we also use these standardized containers so we can easily expand if we become with more people to grow our uh, food storage. So this is sort of the kitchen area. Uh, over here is the washing machine and the boiler for hot water and some brooms but we mostly cover this up with a curtain. And then in here we have a place to work. So with your laptop, do some work here. You have all your charging uh, from USB to a normal socket. You can charge your laptop, phones, cameras. We store some blankets here. If it gets cold in the evening, you want to sit outside. Also some storage for camera gears, electronics, office supplies. It's all in these uh, boxes, nicely stored. We have a bookshelf for yeah, some books to read. We don't really have many yet. But we do have a first aid box. And for the rest, we have a shower. It's actually kind of a weird shower. It's made from recycled bricks, from plastic. And uh, so yeah, inside here we can uh, take showers. Well, I guess you also know how that works. And on this side, we have a tea shelf where we store all our fine teas gathered from people around the world. Because we have our piece of land and we need to communicate together, we use uh, walkie-talkie, so we don't use the mobile or the data on our internet, but we can get more local uh, network set up. So we can ask Jason in the container to see if he can... Okay, uh, give us a tour, Jason, in the workspace. Yeah, man, let's do it. All right, we're coming. Can you do that one again? So this space is also a little bit tight. We're going to use a fisheye to make it easier to see everything. So in the middle of the workspace, we have this big sturdy working table. Uh, it's made from our old storage shelf. Um, we put crates underneath so that we can categorize and organize everything easily. 
we use a color coding system to help us find everything. So we have like electronics in yellow, plumbing equipment in blue, safety equipment in red, power tools in gray, electronics cables in black, and consumable storage in brown. On the outside of the container, we have uh, the safety equipment. We've put it on the outside so that it's easy to grab if you need to get something quickly. On this side of the container, we have the rough metalwork area. So this is for doing all the dusty, uh, messy, loud work like grinding, uh, like welding. Um, on the back wall, we have all our metal specific tools. So we have like the grinding discs, uh, files, set square for welding, metal saws. Underneath, we also have storage. So there's our welding accessories. We have a vacuum cleaner and we have an air compressor. So behind me is the tool wall. This is to store all the tools that we want to be able to grab e easily and quickly. Um, so we have our wrenches, we have our hammers, we have our charging station, screwdrivers, pliers, uh, measuring equipment and drawing equipment. We have the nuts and bolts storage. So these drawers we use to store all of our nuts and bolts and consumables and fixtures. <laughs> We've organized it in rows like M4, M5, M8, M10, uh, and then increasing in length this way. Uh, in this area we have all our machines. So we have the drill press, we have the metal chop saw, and we have the lathe. Again, we've put a storage area above, above here. Uh, in this area, we're using it to store the paint, the chemicals and oils, and of course, the first aid kit. Uh, next, I'll show you the woodwork area, which is outside. So we decided to split the woodwork and the metal and plastic work uh, on the inside and the outside. Like we want to be able to collect all the dust from the metal and the plastic so it doesn't go into the environment, but the wood is okay because it's biodegradable, so it's okay to do on the outside. Um, so in the woodwork area, we have the chop saw. We have a belt sounder. We have a storage shelf underneath for keeping our circle saw. And um, we also have some storage for the clamps. Uh, also on this station, we have a point for connecting power outside. So we're probably going to do a lot of work outside. And for this, we'll need to run some cables out to do that. Uh, so that was the tour of the workspace. All right, so now boat containers are ready to be shipped off to our new piece of land in Portugal. Feels very sad to be leaving the Netherlands. It's beautiful weather, but the trucks are coming to be picked up. Do you think they're in balance? Ooh, perfect balance. There's the late heavy corner. Portugal. All right, so that's it. Now, if you want to see the next step where we install this container on our piece of land or wonder why we make a base camp in the first place, make sure to watch this video. If you like this process and continue how we move forward, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to support us and make sure we can continue development, make sure to visit support.projectcom.com. Thanks for watching and see you in the next Project Com video.